23, 2022, police responded to a 911 call made from a home located in Yuma, Arizona. When they arrived, the two responding officers made their way through a fence towards an open shed in the backyard of the residence. In the shed, they could see an unconscious male dressed in blue pajamas laying in the middle of the shed and a woman kneeling next to him attempting to perform CPR. The woman identified herself as Andrea McRae, and the man lying on the shed floor was her husband, Marvon McRae. The officers noticed an old-looking chair in the shed and some rope laying in a heap on the floor. When the fire department arrived, they took over working on Marvon as Andrea worriedly stood and watched. Andrea was clearly very anxious and could barely hold still from shaking and presumably due to the nerves about her husband's condition. One of the officers asked her to come with him to the front yard so that she could tell him what happened. Andrea told the officer that after an argument, she found Marvon hanging in the shed in an attempt to take his own life. Now, was this simply an attempt to end his own life due to a spousal argument, maybe depression caused by turmoil in their marriage, or did something more sinister happen in the shed and in that McRae family home? Some people are even comparing Andrea's actions toward her husband to the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp situation. And with all the information that has started to come out online, it seems as though Andrea McRae might not be so innocent. Due to conflicting statements made to the officers, her strange behavior during this event, as well as other alarming behavior that was documented online, many people started to speculate that the details given by Andrea barely scratched the surface of the truth. Andrea is a mom, wife, makeup artist, businesswoman, vegan, and most recently, a self-proclaimed medical herb guru. These aspects of her life garner a wide array of viewers from several different communities across social media. Andrea is known to perpetually be on live stream, literally broadcasting her and her family's lives. For years, she has had no problem with people across the internet essentially being a fly on the wall in her home. However, Dre didn't gain all of the followers overnight. In her early 20s, Andrea was already married and had two daughters named Bella and Oasis. Unfortunately, her first marriage came to an end, but the two parents have been able to co-parent with the girls going to see their father for holidays. Dre is a Jehovah's Witness, so it works out for the girls to go celebrate holidays with their father because that is not something that Dre partakes in due to her religion. Being a single mom wouldn't last long for her. 2014, she met a man named Marvon McRae. Marvon, who goes by Vaughn, was in the Marines and stationed in Yuma, Arizona. He is strong, handsome, tender-hearted, and everyone who knows him says he is just an amazing person. It's not hard to see what made Dre fall for him so hard, even though she was five years his senior. Vaughn's parents had some reservations about Dre and thought that maybe they were possibly moving too fast, but Vaughn would hear no negativity about their love. It seems that he was so offended or convinced to be so offended by his family's reservations that Vaughn quit speaking to his family for a very long time. Vaughn and Dre would go on to marry in 2015, and he would become an active participant in parenting Dre's two daughters from her first marriage. They also added a member to their family, a son that they had together named Raza. Dre has made it known that she didn't really like the military lifestyle, and lucky for her, I guess, three years later in 2018, Vaughn was honorably discharged from the Marines due to a knee. After his discharge, Vaughn would take on the role of stay-at-home dad, which allowed Dre to focus on her budding social media career and her jewelry business that she was pushing. And that business really started back before the marriage, before he became the stay-at-home dad, back in 2016. Because back in 2016, Dre began posting makeup tutorials on YouTube, and it's clear why a lot of people enjoyed her videos, because she really does have a gift with makeup. Now, while this was mildly successful, it wasn't until she began selling jewelry for a company called Paparazzi that she started bringing in a lot of money for her family. Paparazzi has gained a lot of scrutiny in the media because, in reality, the business is an MLM, or kind of like a pyramid scheme. And MLMs, or multi-level marketing, get a lot of backlash in general. After Vaughn was discharged from the Marines, over the last couple of years, the family has made a pretty drastic change in their lifestyle. Dre has always had a very beautiful and curvy body, but she decided that she wanted to lose weight and begin eating healthier and more natural. So she introduced her family to an alkaline vegan diet, which is not only refraining from meat and dairy, but also trying to make your body as alkaline as possible. And apparently by not eating anything acidic, supposedly your body's cells function more optimally, 
which let me just say, I don't know if that's true. That's just what the definition of alkaline vegan says. There are a lot of mixed opinions on it. However, this diet is said to prevent diseases like high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and many other ailments, which is pretty ironic because after the family started this diet, some of the family members' health began to decline and rapidly. You can see how much weight Dre and Vaughn both lost since being on this diet, and even their children lost weight as well, which was definitely not needed, especially because their bodies are still growing. Even though both Dre and Vaughn have said that the diet made them feel amazing, people started to notice that Vaughn was becoming visibly gaunt and sickly looking. It was a huge change from this strong and filled out Marine that he was just a few years prior. After this, many people in Dre's online communities started to notice a change in her as well. She was beginning to display some concerning behavior that was all documented in her hour long live streams. In addition to the new diet, Dre started doing research and introducing different herb remedies, herbs, teas, powders, and all sorts of alternative natural supplements into the family's lives. And one of the main herbs that she introduced to the family is called Kratom. Kratom is a very controversial herb and it has been said it also kind of has like opioid-like properties. At high doses, it can help with things like pain and anxiety and at low doses, it can act as a stimulant and increase energy and focus, supposedly. Now, as you can imagine, this is absolutely not for children, but allegedly there have been times that Dre has given some to her kids, as well as other various herbs and teas, and one that she calls knockout tea to make them go to sleep. That's right. Oh, and the one you gave me was... And tea? Yes. Yes. When does mommy give it to you? You give it to me a lot and I drink it. That's right. Oh, and the one you gave me was... What's that brown thing called? It's like before I go to bed. Oh, tea? Oh, mm. no, it's like, it's almost like crayon or something. Oh, passion flower. Yeah, passion flower. I drink that, I drink that every day and I... You don't drink it every day. Yes, I do. Um. But you do drink it when you are tired. very, well, no, not tired, when, when you're having a hard time. Okay. Now to buy this herb, you have to be over the age of 21, and it's not something that is approved by the FDA, which Dre has been vocal about not trusting anyway, which is odd, but ugh, let's save all that for a different time. Hey, I believe the FDA considers this poisonous. That's exactly why I bought it, okay? The FDA says it's bad? Okay, then that must mean it's good. Psh. Hello, I've been around way too long to think. <laughs> That the FDA putting a poisonous stamp don't mean nothing in the world of Dre McRae. Okay, I'm just saying. You, you try to put a ban on something, then I'm like, okay, then it must be good. Let me go see why there's a possible ban on it. You know what I'm saying? So once my, like one of my friends told me about this and she was like, just letting you know, it's, a, you know, it might be against the FDA saying it's poisonous. I was like... Add to cart and give me two of those, but take one back out because I gotta save money. So over the course of her journey into alternative medicine, she has become very anti-vax, anti-FDA, and anti-doctor. Vaughn not allowing Dre to heal him made her angry, and their arguments became more and more frequent. It seems the more distant Vaughn became, the more erratic Dre would become and possibly felt like she was losing control over him. Now, I haven't been able to find out much about Dre's childhood, but she has said herself that she had dealt with some sort of trauma growing up. However, she believes that she has already worked through all of her trauma and that Vaughn needed to do the same. Now, Vaughn did have some challenging times in his life, but he has said that in general, he was a pretty happy kid and had a good childhood. Vaughn's mother, Letitia, was only 14 when she got pregnant with her first child and 16 when she had her second child. She was only a kid herself. For her, growing up so fast and raising two children became too much, and Vaughn ended up moving in with his grandparents, who gained sole custody and ended up adopting Vaughn. Vaughn's mother, as well as his biological father, have both owned up to their mistakes and their shortcomings as parents. Vaughn has recently chosen to forgive them so that he could mend relationships with his family members. Now, what goes on behind closed doors, we may never know, but from the outside looking in, 
it appeared Dre was possibly the one holding on to more resentment towards his parents than Vaughn was towards his own parents. It kind of seems like Dre was possibly projecting some of her own trauma onto Vaughn because she tried to convince him that he had this horrible childhood and that his biological parents did not love him. She also convinced Vaughn that he must have PTSD from when he served in the Marines and that that was why he was having depression and mood swings, not affiliating it with the fact that he was taking these new herbs or medications, not eating regularly, losing so much weight. It had to somehow be correlated with that. When Vaughn went to visit a psychiatrist at the Veterans Hospital, the doctor told Vaughn that he didn't believe that he was suffering from PTSD at all. He even suggested that maybe his wife needed to come in for some mental health counseling. And I believe that this caused Dre to have even more disdain towards doctors. However, one doctor that Dre did decide to put her trust in was someone who had been described as either a chiropractor or physical therapist. She said that she believed that this man was a healer. She said that this doctor worked on her, Vaughn, as well as her children in the past, and that during some of their sessions, Dre describes some sort of massage technique that is supposed to cleanse your gut. According to her, this is where all of a person's trauma is held. She says that after Vaughn got this done, his mood started to drastically change towards her, and he became more angry, depressed, and confrontational. She believes that the doctor did dark magic on Vaughn and planted seeds in him that caused her husband to change. Dre then went on to accuse this doctor of texting her and asking her and Vaughn to do a switcheroo with him and his wife. Swingin', if you know what I mean. <laughs> so according to Dre, she took the doctor to court and got a restraining order against him. But she still believes that whatever he did to Vaughn was still affecting him and their marriage. Like I said, just a little bit unhinged and kind of a little bit delirious in my opinion. On several of Dre's live streams and videos that she has shared, you can hear arguments between her and Vaughn. One reason people have actually compared Dre to Amber Heard is because it seems like even though Vaughn is clearly asking Dre to just leave him alone, she keeps going and recording him and just going in and in and in. Even though Dre isn't yelling, you can tell by the tone of her voice and the condescending way she's talking to him that she knows exactly what buttons to push for Vaughn to blow up. Like Amber Heard, even when Johnny Depp just wanted to be left alone, she would badger and badger him and not give him any space. And then when he would blow up and yell to get his point across, he would be made to look like the crazy and abusive one. It's been discovered that over the past couple of years, about 25 phone calls were made to 911, either by Dre or neighbors for noise complaints, for DV claims, for overdoses, and even an attempt to take his own life regarding Vaughn. The strange thing is, even though Dre influences other people to use these herbs and denounces traditional medicine, she still has no problem getting certain medications, even if she has to do so illegally. This is one of the many contradictions in Dre's all-natural philosophy. Some of her longtime followers have recalled that in a past live stream, Dre broke her foot while dancing around in her kitchen. When she went to the hospital, she was given pain medication, and it's thought that she possibly developed a dependency on this medication. This theory was made stronger when footage came out of Dre coaching Vaughn on how to get pain pills from one of his doctors. I'm going to play recordings from the Facebook page of Dre coaching Vaughn on what to tell his doctors in order to get very strong pain meds. She's on a live stream and it's just her basically telling her followers what she tells him to tell the doctor. And they can't 
x-rays and and probably really strong pain medication and i think uh, don't even trip if they don't give you strong pain medication let me know i'll go to mexico so a lot of people are saying that what they're getting out of listening to this recording, it's a bit longer than the clips I played, but basically sums it up, is that she wants Vaughn to get very strong pain medications to feed her addiction. This is all alleged information. It's just people's thoughts. Someone else said you can get Kate anywhere in Yuma, Arizona. You can even get it from the gas station. Apparently Kratom is very common there. A lot of people take it. There have been a lot of overdose cases about it as well. Dre had mentioned before that she does not like doctors, and I think this is the reason why. They must have 100% caught on to her. Mind you, she does not go to the doctor with Vaughn, but she's coaching him as to what to say, because I think if she went, then they would have no chance of getting anything. They probably caught on to her. She doesn't even want him to mention seizures, but if need be, if they ask, then she's like, say that. But all she wants him to talk about is the back pain, so he can get strong meds but why not get actual medical help for the seizures? The ending of this recording is what really pissed me off. Just listen. Oh, what blessings have come out of him having seizures, you know? There are so many blessings that have come out of Yes, she said blessings. These seizures are blessings to her addiction. Because if doctors believe a patient is showing signs of drug-seeking behavior, they can put them in a database and pretty much blacklist them from being able to get pain pills from them or any other doctor in the future. So these followers think that Dre needed Vaughn to get the pills for her because she was no longer able to get them herself. When that stopped working, she needed something to help her withdrawal symptoms. It's well known that people addicted to opioids will sometimes use this herb that she was using as a way to ease withdrawal symptoms and even sometimes to help get over their pain pill addiction. However, like anything else, the herb should be used in moderation. And there are videos of Dre taking spoonful after spoonful, which is highly dangerous. Go. I don't know if it's me. Is it affecting me already? I feel something. Ever since the electric eats, I want to find a wild pineapple. So stop. No worries. I think I feel something good. <laughs> I'm gonna take more. Oh my! Listen. Y'all gonna have to take care of me. That's all I gotta say. <sighs> okay, let's do some more. Uh, a stinking toe. No, we got some questions. I need to get questions. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. That was a lot, y'all. <laughs> So hard to go home. Sarah, please make a thing. I will. You're gonna help me with the mess. We're gonna have to go small. What are you making, baby? I wouldn't say small. I would say semi-thin, but they're long. Don't be bashing my feet, Maya. The fact that she was doing all of this on a live stream and pretty much telling other people how to finagle pain pills from a doctor or his office is just very concerning. Whether it be from the copious amounts of this herb or a mixture of the other herbs and possibly medications, Dre started to become a little unhinged on her live streams. I would also imagine that a component of this is lack of nutrition. Because when people are malnourished or are not eating regularly, they not only get hangry and angry and crazy, but they start to act a little bit different and odd. So over the past year, Vaughn started to display some symptoms of depression, stress, and anxiety. 
Dre and Vaughn's relationship also started to become strained because when he was in these moods, he would refuse to take any of the herbs that Dre was offering him. Don't forget that the three children were always present in the house when these things took place. In addition to fighting in front of the children, Dre has admitted on live streams that there are a lot of things that she has done that she wishes she could remove from her children's memories. A very alarming statement. These are things that I, I pray leave my kids' memory because as a mom, that's the only thing that's a, you know, replay. You know, I hate that. I, I, I freaked out. I blew up on myself. And I yelled. And it wasn't okay. It's because I've given my kids memories that I wish could be erased from their head. I literally feel like I'm just a walking monster. Like, I, 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 I feel that way all the time. Like, it, I, Many of her followers have said that she has shown clear favoritism towards her daughters and treats their young son Raza much worse. And by her own admission, she has blown up at him, spanked him too hard, and even had to tell her daughters to remove him from the room because she thought she would do something that she would regret. You need to come and get Raza out of the room right now because I feel like I'm going to do something I'm going to regret. And I was so serious. So they got him out of the room and I just went to bed. When I woke up, the RV was clean, 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 spick and span. And then I seen this on the table, and uh, it looks like Bella is the one that made it. Let me show you. I am happy that you wrote that down. Who did? Yeah, Bella wrote, I am happy that, and she wrote a line. I am grateful that my sisters and she wrote a line. So this is what it says. I am happy that and Raza filled it in. I got a chip and churros. I am grateful that my sisters made churros. I am glad mommy got to see daddy today. Even though I'm mad, I love mommy and sisters. I will try my best not to be mad. I will try my best not to furious picture. Now watch how she speaks to him in this video. I'm about to make something that you can have a mango. I keep saying the same thing over and over again to Ross. Okay. Even taking some of the chickpea bean water and putting it on a plate. So mommy? Yes? Put my blanket back in my room right now. Who gave you permission to take it out? That is my blanket, Taras. I never, never want you guys playing with my blankets. You know this. What is going on, Taras? Put it back, please. I want your Dude. And it was on the floor, Taras. That's bad. I don't know what you said. I said dinner's not ready right yet. I don't, what? Dinner's not ready yet. I don't understand your point in saying that to us. What? What is your point in saying that? Or how about you just stop talking? No, it's so I know that this is not going to be this. I know that this is not going to be this. 
I just can't imagine talking to my young child that way. That poor baby was hungry and it's just so sad because apparently he was hungry a lot. I'm sorry, but an alkaline vegan diet, in my opinion, is not good for a growing little boy or for those girls. In some of Dre's videos, Raza asks to look at pictures of meat because he misses having it. I know some people are vegan for certain reasons, and that is absolutely fine, but this is just terribly sad to me. Sure. <laughs> it means to go to bed. <laughs> I don't want to be knocked out. I, I want you knocked out. Keep sipping that pee, boy. No. Uh, uh, we don't say no anymore. No. Uh, we gotta say something else. Okay, let's do the try not to say no challenge of sweet window. Okay. Drink that pee. Please. <laughs> It feels almost like mommy dearest of sorts, just like massive control. Teaching your child that they can't say no is seriously dangerous, especially when it is about body autonomy. Like so many other controlling parents, Dre made the decision to take the children out of public school and teach them herself. With no access to the outside world, the kids aren't going to be able to learn any other ideas or opinions besides their mothers, which is clearly very concerning. This home... This is a home of Slay University, okay? I literally, whenever I took my kids out of the K-12 system or whatever, I had to um, put down the, the school that they will be attending next, and I put Slay University because up in here, up in this household, my kids are going to get the best education. And I'm also going to show them not just what is good or what is bad, I'm also going to show us, show them how to like buck up and be strong and cut these foods. Over the course of all of these diet changes, in addition to the mental health decline from Vaughn, Vaughn reportedly began having seizures, which he had no documented history of ever having in his past. One of their daughters also developed seizures during this time as well, although hers are much less documented compared to Vaughn's. Now, when his seizures first started, Vaughn would go to the ER and seek medical attention and medical treatment and would be given various medications, including Ativan and Xanax. Because the doctors weren't able to find the cause of Vaughn's seizures, they would not prescribe him a drug to keep him at home in case they started again, at least according to Dre. That's what she reports. So I kind of feel like maybe they prescribed him something more long-term or wanted to do more testing on him, but Dre said no and convinced Vaughn to refuse the treatment. Since the doctors wouldn't send Vaughn home with Ativan or Xanax, Dre has said that she herself would go over the border of Mexico and smuggle these medications back to their home so that she could treat her husband herself. Now apparently, she's a doctor. She's even admitted to giving Vaughn medication sometimes without his knowledge. Um, I might be giving him... Um, what, like another little thing of Xanax if he gets too low he doesn't know he had one so so why was this happening I don't think it takes a genius to figure out why a perfectly healthy man went from never having a seizure to developing seizures after starting a diet that caused him to practically be skin and bones and being given all sorts of herbs and medications and here are some of the known side effects of that herb Loss of appetite, psychosis, tremors, and, oh wow, what do you know, seizures. Some viewers think that maybe Dre was giving Von Xanax or Ativan secretly and then stopping abruptly, which would cause serious irritability, body aches, and in turn, seizures. Now, even though I think that a combination of the herbs and medication that Dre was giving Von is most likely the cause of his seizures and health decline, there is another theory as well. Due to Dre's successful business, there were mass quantities of this paparazzi costume jewelry in their home at any given time. Dre and Vaughn both handled this jewelry by packaging orders, displaying it, wearing it on live streams, and these pieces were just all over their home. Paparazzi has recently come under fire for not only its shoddy business model, but because of their false safety claims made about their jewelry. On their website, paparazzi claimed not to use lead or nickel in any of their pieces. 
However, when several sellers started getting sick, a third-party lab did testing on a lot of the jewelry, and the lab discovered dangerous levels of both lead and nickel, supposedly the highest seen in consumer products since the 70s. When the impacted sellers removed all paparazzi jewelry from their homes, 75% of them fully recovered from the various ailments that they were suffering from. Some of the side effects of prolonged exposure to nickel and lead are stomach issues, fatigue, irritability, headaches, and seizures. So could Vaughn, their daughter, and even Dre, to a lesser extent, be experiencing symptoms from exposure to toxic levels of lead and nickel? Dre was clearly very domineering to all of her family members, but especially controlling toward Vaughn. Vaughn had recently reconnected with his family members, and even though Dre acted happy for him, when Vaughn would speak about his parents, you could tell by her facial expressions that she was not happy. They actually decided to purchase an RV to travel from Arizona to Vaughn's family home in Savannah, Georgia, but it still seemed like Dre was trying to drive a wedge between Vaughn and his family, which is said to have happened with all of his friends as well. Was it that she just wanted to control him and have him all to herself? Even though there were so many things for Dre's audience to be concerned about, people really started becoming alarmed about her behavior when she started live streaming during Vaughn's seizure episodes. There was one live stream where Vaughn was in the background and he had seven seizures, and Dre didn't seek any medical attention for him. He's had seven seizures. We've been praying all night. Bella was helping me a lot, but she got tired and um, I told her it's okay to go to bed. His seizures, they were, at first they were 48 minutes apart and then the first one was 48 minutes apart. The second was 44 minutes apart. The third one was 40 minutes apart. The fifth one was 39 minutes apart. But now the sixth one came 56 minutes apart. So they are getting longer, you know. At first they were going from 48 to 44 to 40, 39. And then we went 56 minutes apart. And now we're at 71 minutes apart. So it's always a pattern. I'm hoping that um, now if 71 plus 15 is what? 86. So I'm hoping that they'll be 86 minutes apart now. I'm going to give him, I've already given him four milligrams of Ativan. And I'm going to give him another two more. So I looked at the dosage for the day, and it's like 10 milligrams. Um, like limit for the day. And um, I think the last time he was in the hospital, it took five or six milligrams for them to finally stop. I just feel so sick to my stomach. Baby, I need you to take this medicine, okay? I need you to take this medicine, okay? Here, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you take it. Hey, baby. I need you to take this medicine, okay? Okay, here. Drink a little bit of water. Drink a little bit of water. Come on. Come on. I need you to take this medicine, okay? Not only was she filming him during a very personal event, but she made no attempt to get him to the ER. In fact, at one point, Dre had to leave her home to go get something for Vaughn, and she left her children there, alone, to care for him during his seizures. They called her, and she instructed them not to allow him to get up, and it was like they had done it several times before, like it was a routine. Here's the frantic phone call. Here's the instruction. 
Can you imagine being a child and how traumatizing it would have to be to look after a parent while they are having a seizure? Seizure after seizure after seizure. Most people would probably start to lose some sleep and maybe act a little different than usual if something like this happened to their loved one. But Dre's behavior has just become bizarre. Yesterday, I put my saliva on him. So did. I went... All up in my mouth. My... And put it on him. On the top of his head, on his neck, and on his arm. Saliva carries information. And I want him, I can't touch him physically, but my saliva is going to go through his body and it's going to tell him, I'm here, I want you, wake up. That video just gives me the creeps and has very, very close ties, in my opinion, to Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction, just giving me all sorts of those vibes. She even admitted to putting unauthorized substances in Vaughn's trach tube. So it's just beyond understandable. Due to Dre not accepting the treatment of certain doctors, she has moved Vaughn to more than three different hospitals while he's been in a coma, which I'm not a doctor, but it just seems very risky to move somebody around so many times when they are in that kind of a fragile state. She believes that the doctors just want her to accept that Vaughn is going to remain brain dead and not recover so that they can use him for his organs. When Vaughn's parents heard what had happened to their son, they wanted to get to the hospital right away so that they could see him and be there to support their child. Several true crime channels started to cover what was going on with the McCrays, and they decided to help raise awareness for Vaughn and help raise awareness to get money to help his mother, Leticia, cover the expenses needed to get from Georgia to Arizona. Vaughn's father and his stepmother were able to drive there first, but when they arrived at the hospital, Dre apparently didn't want them to visit with Vaughn. Dre felt like his family was going to bring negativity into Vaughn's room, and there was a power struggle between her and the family and the hospital. Finally, though, after several weeks, Vaughn's family was able to see their son, and just the other day, Leticia shared updates about Vaughn's family and relayed some new information. Here is what Leticia had to say after she was able to see her son. I had a blessed day. It was so... Oh my goodness. I felt like today was... Like when I first had him, when I first brought him in this world, I knew he knew I was there because I reached down and kissed his, kissed his hand. He let out a smile and I reached over to kiss his cheek. He turned his head towards me. And when I say he was like, you're not going to give me no pay. My son is no longer on the ventilator. That is true. Responsive. He's responsive. All the time is every now and again. When I tell you, it was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, I put, oh. I put my hand in his hand, and you can feel him trying to squeeze it. I prayed over him. I asked him. I said, "My boy, open your eyes. Would y'all believe that I saw the white part in the pupil of my son's eye? Opened it slightly. He opened them slightly." Yes. We're pretty much turned up to the eyelid, but he actually opened them. I didn't know what to expect when I walked in that room. For the first time, and probably for the past couple of weeks, I wasn't prepared. It's like I walked into, oh my goodness, y'all. If you can do, if I could just describe the feeling that I have right now. I did cry a little bit, but I waited time to find the room with you. Because it wasn't tears of sadness, it was tears of joy. I really do thank everybody that made this possible really made this possible. It's been on my heart since yesterday. Was how can I forgive? How can I forgive? And I just believe that if I don't forgive, then I am not going to move forward if I do not forgive. Andrea McCray, I forgive you. And I pray that you forgive me. My bond is the main reason that I know you and you know me. So we got to just keep prayers up for him that hopefully he'll progress. Raza needs, needs me. He needs his dad. Just that chant that you say to me, my boy, open your eyes. Molly, thank you. From the time I walked in that hospital, 
to the time I left out, to the time I'm sitting here talking to you guys, is Marvon open your eyes. And I saw him today. I saw his eyes open. So as you can see, even though the doctors said that he wouldn't recover, he was able to respond to his mother by opening his eyes slightly, and he has even been taken off the ventilator and been able to breathe on his own. This has been just such an emotional sign of relief for his family, for all the people who've gotten close to this case, but what happens now? The hospital where Vaughn is located decided to put a lockdown on his room for his safety due to protests that were happening for the cause, Justice for Vaughn, that were going on outside and presumably from the videos and statements that they have seen of Dre that she's put out now online. No one, including Dre, is allowed to visit with Vaughn right now, and apparently the police department has opened up a new investigation to see if anything Dre did could have caused Vaughn's brain injury or any other health issues that he has. Dre's ex-husband has been made aware of all of the videos and believes that allowing his daughters to remain in custody of their mother would not be in their best interest. All of the herbs, trauma, adult situations, and treatment towards the kids at the hands of Dre has led the girl's father to file for an emergency custody of his daughters. The sad part about this is that Raza, who is Vaughn's biological son and the girl's half-brother, will have to be separated from his sisters. With Dre currently living in their RV and making statements that she will never return to Yuma, I'm hoping that Raza's grandparents can get custody of him, even if it's just temporary, so that he doesn't have to be exposed to everything going on right now. Hopefully, if that's the case, they can still work out some sort of way for him to still be able to see his sisters, who have been one of his main points of comfort his entire life. In my opinion, all of these kids are going to need to undergo intense therapy for having dealt with drug use, parent arguments, their mother's treatment, and now their father's attempted attack on his own life and hospitalization. Dre has been relatively quiet the last couple of days, and I think it's because she's starting to regret putting so much of her life online now that she is at risk of losing custody of her children and seeing all of this backlash. I'm sure she probably also feels jealous and a bit resentful that when Vaughn opened his eyes and made a response, it was with his mother in the room and not her. Even for an adult, seeing someone you love in such a scary state and not being able to do anything to help them is a really emotional experience. And the fact that Dre was putting that on her children's shoulders is just crazy to me. There was an instance when Dre decided to go through Vaughn's text messages and got angry with him for talking about his feelings and some of their marital problems with family and friends. Vaughn was obviously upset about his lack of privacy, and allegedly Dre didn't give him his phone back for quite some time. People may be wondering too, how did a Marine end up in such a toxic and manipulative relationship? Aren't Marines trained to mentally be strong? And while that's true, Dre stripped Vaughn of all of his resources. Like so many abusers do, usually without their partner even realizing it, she isolated Vaughn from everyone so that when push came to shove, she was the only person that he could turn to. So the night of May 22nd, after one of the couple's more serious arguments, Vaughn told Dre that he was done and he wanted to leave so that he could go have some time to himself. After he left, he texted Dre that he needed some money to get a hotel for a few nights and that he was going to take himself to the VA hospital once more to seek some help for his mental health. Dre refused to give him any money. And you can see here in these texts that Dre had full control over the couple's funds, which really makes no sense considering that Vaughn got his own money from that veteran's check every single month. Who was Dre to make her husband ask for permission to use his own money and ultimately not allow him to gain access to it? Withholding finances and not allowing a spouse to use any money and having to ask permission for mutual money and keeping tabs of spending is a very common form of financial abuse. So with her not allowing Vaughn access to their money and with him having no one to turn to, Vaughn had no choice but to return home. He told Dre that he just wanted to be left alone so that he could get his feelings under control. There was a video that I believe has now been deleted where Dre explains that Vaughn said he was going to sleep in their den, which was actually just the shed in the backyard. I'm not really sure why they called it a den. I don't know if there was a couch in there, perhaps maybe a TV. In the police report, the officer didn't mention the shed being in any way a den type area, which would probably be something to be documented since most people don't just have a couch or bed in the backyard shed if they have a shed at all. All that the police report said was that there was an old wobbly chair. So was Vaughn sleeping on the floor in the shed? Was he sleeping in the chair? I would really like to see pictures of what the shed looked like inside. 
Anyway, the next morning Vaughn allegedly came into the house and used their children's restroom. Dre offered him a cup of tea and then he went back outside to the shed. Dre decided to go check on him and when she entered the shed, she found Vaughn hanging from a rope tied to a rafter. Dre started screaming and in one police report, she said that she called for her daughter to come outside and call 911. But in another report, she said that her daughter came out on her own. It's not reported who was the one to call 911, but Dre stated she tried to use the wobbly chair to get Vaughn down. When that didn't work, she had to locate his knife and she was able to cut him down. 911 instructed Dre to start performing CPR on Vaughn, but during the CPR, Dre got up and she got up to go put their dog inside the house, which, what? Like, what are you even talking about? And another YouTuber pointed out that once you have assumed responsibility for giving someone CPR or any other life-saving measure, you can't just get up and stop. Here's a list of why someone could stop administering CPR. And what you don't see on there is putting a dog away because that is not a reason on this list. When the emergency responders arrived, they gave Vaughn a medication to restart his heart. And when that worked, they continued to perform CPR and he was life flighted to a hospital. Dre stayed at the home so that she could get her children situated and speak with the police about what happened. The police never entered the home, questioned the children, and only stayed at the scene for a total of 45 minutes before they left. A lot of people are saying that the police who responded to this call should have looked into the McCrays a little more and seen that they had a history of over 20 911 calls relating to domestic disputes and DV claims. They should also have questioned the children, or at least the daughter, who supposedly came outside with Dre and saw Vaughn. If this were a woman who was found hanging in a shed at a home with over 20 DV calls, 911 calls, don't you think that the police would have had a little more questions and even suspicion towards the spouse? Especially since there was no note left by Vaughn and Dre was showing extremely strange behavior when talking to the police. At the hospital, it was determined that Vaughn had been without oxygen for almost 30 minutes. He was in a coma, placed on a ventilator, and presumed by the doctors to be essentially brain dead. 